Hey everyone, Josh here, and what you just heard me play was guitar, bass, and keyboard at the same time. And um, I want to show you guys how to do this, and this is why I named it a how-to video. So the reason why I'm making this video is that I know um, some of you might be going to small churches, and um, most of the time in small churches, they don't have many musicians in their worship team. Uh, right now, I also go to a small church at the moment, and we didn't have a bassist or a keyboardist um, on our team. So I decided to take that up and um, play um, those instruments as well. And um, yeah, I just hope that this is a blessing to um, churches, um, hopefully all around the world, and that they can also adapt this idea. Oh, and also this video is not only limited to churches. You might have a band, say, that doesn't have a bassist or keyboardist. So you as a guitarist might want to play those instruments as well. So it goes for pretty much anybody that wants to play these instruments all at once. So this video has quite a lot of information packed into it. So what I'll do is that I'll put the timings in the description below um, where you can see certain parts of the video that you're interested in. So say for example you want to see a diagram of how everything is set up and how everything's wired up then I'll show you a diagram of that explaining what how that works. And then some of you want to actually physically see how I've plugged everything in. So then I'll show you how I've done that as well. Just to give you guys an overall view on this video, it'll be split up into two main sections. The first section will cover the bare minimum that you'll need to run all these instruments at once and how much it will cost. And to be honest, it doesn't cost that much at all. Um, and the second part will cover uh, what I've done personally. So I've kind of expanded on this idea and you know started using two amps and two keyboards and all. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so here's a diagram of the minimum amount of equipment that you'll need to run all these um, all these instruments at once. And on the side, you can see the average to max cost um, of all this and it's really less than 500 US dollars as you can see in the bottom uh, and I'm sure most of you already have a electric guitar or an amp that you're already using at church and you might already have some pedals so it might even cost less so yeah you can just go over the diagram yourself and uh, one more thing um, on the bottom left hand corner you can see uh, I've written a device that can access YouTube and be plugged straight into the PA system so what I did there was, what that means I mean, is that um, that's the keyboard sound. So before um, I got the two keyboards that you saw at the start of the video, I used my iPad and what you can do is that you search on, you can search on YouTube, um, keyboard pads in A major and B major, C minor, and there's usually 20 minute long uh, videos of just the same, um, the, of a pad being played in that key. So that's what I used to use before um, we, I got the two keyboards. This also means that you don't actually need to know how to play keyboard. But yeah, so just pause the video and um, study the diagram for yourself and then we'll just move on to the next part now. Okay, so to get your guitar to play guitar and bass at the same time, you'll plug your guitar into your pedal over here that's um, splitting your um, signal. So this lead over here is being plugged into your um, amp, your guitar amp. So that's over there. That's going to get your guitar sound. And this um, this lead here is being plugged into um, the bass pedals. So over here on my octave pedal, I've turned the direct signal all the way off and put um, the first octave I mean, um, up to about 11 o'clock and then the second octave is not even on. And then just from you know, the range, I put it in mid instead of low because low is a little bit too low. So I put about mid so you can kind of hear the bass sound. Here on the tube amp model, what I've done is that, again, I've just increased the level of how loud I want the bass sound to be, and then um, then I got the lows. Um, I got a little bit of lows, but I've taken all the highs off and then the drive off. And don't worry about the other ones. It's just the lows and highs you can be worried about. So the lows I've um, increased a little bit because I want the lows to come through. But the highs I've fully taken off so that um, none of my high strings, like the high E string and high B string, and the higher strings will um, come through to the bass uh, bass sound. And then take your um, bass sound and just plug it into, you don't really need even a bass amp, you just need to plug it into your a DI box or something and then that can just run to your sound disc and then that'll get your bass sound. And finally for the keyboard sound, you really don't need any keyboards as such. Um, all you need is an iPad or some kind of computer that can access YouTube or even like a phone um, because on YouTube there's actually um, pads, so basically worship music uses pads as the keyboard sound. So if you look on YouTube, they usually ha they have if you type up a key G major, A major, C major, whatever key you're using for a song. Um, they there's usually like a 20 minute long pad 
pad background music that you can use um, for um, worship. And then you could just use um, the headphone jack um, over here and just plug it straight into your PA system or sound desk. So that's what I used to use um, before I got the keyboards. Okay, so that was the minimum amount of equipment section done. Now we'll go over what I'm using. So here's a diagram of what I'm using to get my guitar and bass sound. And here's another diagram of what I'm using to get my uh, both my keyboard sounds. But yeah, pause on any diagram that you want to see again and uh, yeah, we'll just move on to the next bit where I describe how I've wired everything up and yeah, just show more in detail how I've wired everything up. Okay, so I've taken my, um, I plugged my guitar into my pedal that's splitting the sound here. And I'm not even using this um, as a reverb pedal, this is just splitting, splitting the sound. If it was used as a reverb pedal, the red light would be on, but it's not. I'm just using it to, again, split the sound up. So I'll talk about, um, this is going to my bass um, amp, so I'll try the bass first. So um, it's going, this is going into my compressor here, and this is an exotic compressor. Um, SP something exotic compressor and um, this here just basically compresses my sound and makes sure, makes sure that all the bass is um, all the bass input is even and that it sounds even outside in the PA system then um, again into my octave pedal and um, yeah and then into my tube amp modeler and uh, yeah this is going into going into this bass amp over here um, it's a PVTNT 115 bass amp amplification and I'm just running it um, DI out. so there's a DI box somewhere somewhere there's a DI box somewhere but it's going into um, the bass the, the PA system outside over there and yeah okay so then we have the guitar I'll talk about the guitar now so this is going into a tuner pedal right here and um, yeah this is again we use 42 hertz like in my other videos and yeah, and then we go into the my um, amp over here. So this, what I've done here, is I'm using the FX loop in this amp because this has an FX loop. Um, this is a Vox AV60, and it's a really nice amp. And um, yeah, so this is going into the input up here, hopefully you can see it. And then I am up around here. You can't really see it, but um, this is being sent into there's a send and return, so this is the send, this um, lead here is the send um, cable. This is being, this is um, sending the signal into my Boss DD500 over here. And then this is going into, this is then splitting the audio so I can have the stereo apps. So um, over here, this is splitting it, then we're going to the Strum Big Sky. Um, in my in my opinion, this is the best pedal in the world. Um, all worship guitarists use it. Because it's amazing. Well, most worship guitarists use it. Um, and um, yeah, this is again stereo. So uh, the red lead here is going into this amp over here. Um, this is a Ross Fame Series Reverb 25. And then the um, pink or um, purple one here is going into the AV60 um, back to the return return input over here and um, yeah it's nice to leave it up and you know yeah. also one last pedal um, I hit this pure, bo pure boost pedal um, I'm not actually using it as a boost pedal I'm just using it as a way to mute the bass um, by not plugging it into a in, like no, there's no um, power coming into this pedal so yeah it just basically mutes the bass and so does this tuner pedal as well. Um, this is for the guitar, so this basically uh, mutes my guitar and also lets me tune. So finally for the keyboards, I have this mini Nova synthesizer, synthesizer, and um, yeah, it just gets all my pad sounds that you use for worship music. And yeah, that's that. And then finally, um, the other keyboard I use is this Yamaha DGX505. This is just getting all my, you know, piano sounds, and electric piano sounds. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention about how this is going out into the system. So, um, this cable here is sending it out to the PA system, and this cable here is sending out into my amp, which is I'm using kind of as a monitor. And over here, this is going straight into the PA system.
you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, just leave a comment below and um, I'll try and reply as soon as possible.